What if we try it with 100% more sound? How does that work? Oh, yay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, friendly chat minions, to tell me that I forgot to turn my mic on while I was panicking. So um, what you did not hear me explaining was that uh, um, I was all ready to go and I got an error message that my stream key was invalid, which, you know, it's the same stream key and I hadn't changed anything and I'd been streaming my prep screen, so I don't know what was going on. I angered some streaming minor deity somewhere. And uh, so this is, we're fixed now. We're good. We're ready to go. Okay. All righty. So how's everybody doing this week? Like, uh, we're in September, which is crazy. I was uh, telling a friend this week, I'm like, how can it be September? Like on the one hand, 2020 has lasted for seven years. And on the other hand, how can it be September? Because I haven't done anything this year. <laughs> so it's this really odd dichotomy of, uh, of feeling, you know, just completely strung out and compressed at the same time. So, okay. So this week, um, we are going to do something new and that is literally it. That's literally the topic. We are going to do something new. Um, so I just, uh, was asked about that a few minutes ago and I was like, oh, we're doing something new. Oh no, no, seriously. That's, that's actually what we're doing. So, uh, we're going to get on that. Um, I do want to share some news to start as well. Um, so, I've been, I've been calling this the thing, uh, for since late July, I think whenever it was that I got started here and, um, you know, I didn't want to call it the show because it sounded way too pretentious and it didn't want to call it the, um, the Lara talks for a while because wow, way to sell the product. And, uh, I didn't, you know, that just, yeah, I didn't have anything I wanted to call it. I did, you know, it was what, what, this is like me and my microphone, blah, blah, blah. But I realized that I was going to have to name it if for no other reason than, um, after we're done here, you know, I take this recording and I put it on YouTube and, um, it, I need a way to tell people how to find it on YouTube. Um, so where I know people have been, uh, listening to the replays there and, uh, commenting and such, which is great. Uh, thank you guys for, uh, for being there when you're hearing this later. Um, but, and then I'm also going to put it into a podcast so that we can, cause seriously, nobody needs to see me while I'm talking. Right. So, and there has to be a, a title if you're going to do these things. So we have a title. I hate titles, by the way. Like when we're doing this, if anybody has any great you know, creative input on how to title things, um, that's what I need you guys to do for me. That is my weak point. So anyway, we are to write and have written. The business, a writer's guide to the business side. There we go. That sounds, I don't know. It sounds very pretentious and faintly wizard-like and it's what I got. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so I will, uh, be putting that. Oh, wait, I actually, do I have, let me see. Hold on. Um, we we're going to, oh, that's not where I wanted to be. Sorry. Hold on. But this is what, yeah. there we go. Look, look, a visual. Hooray. All right. Um, if you're on the podcast here later, you will not be able to see that, but it's the same uh, album art that you <laughs> you will have seen on the podcast. So, so thank you guys for tolerating my fun little thing on that. I've been working on that that uh, title for way too long because I'm not great at titles. So, oh yay! Thanks, chat people. I like it. I like that you like it. Hooray! Thank you. Okay. So yeah. So we're doing this live. I always love people to come uh, and and chat and ask questions and let's make this interactive because. Seriously, nobody wants to listen to me talk for an hour, right? So please, please talk and make interactive, uh, make this interactive and fun. But then it will be on YouTube. Um, it always takes a while to get up on YouTube, usually about 48 hours, but that then goes up with closed captions. Uh, we're not doing closed captions live on Twitch because, I mean, that would be hilarious, but um, I've found that the closed captioning services don't really like what I say naturally, especially when I was doing my talks about Japanese history and whatnot. Um, for some reason, Aizu Wakamatsu is not a default in the dictionary. Who knew? Um, so it gives me a chance to run the, uh, the transcription and check it for, uh, readability, <laughs> sensible words. And then that goes up on YouTube and then it will also be on the podcast. So yay, that's where we're going with that. Um, and brief update in the land of Lara, just because, uh, because it's my show and you can't stop me. Um, uh, but yeah, I've been working on kin and kind, uh, this week a lot. I uh, went back and, oh my gosh, I have 
actually quite a lot of words in this manuscript and some of them are really good words and there are some parts that are really good. So, um, so there, uh, hi Joe, welcome. So, uh, so that's, that's what's going on. I am wearing, I will, I will throw, uh, throw this. It's a video, but I'm wearing my, my personal, uh, shard of Elan swag. This is one of my favorite, favorite shirts. It's just a shirt that says Luca deserved better, which is a extremely accurate line in the book. So <laughs> there we go. Um, so yes, I'm wearing my own swag today. Um, and, uh, the last couple of weeks, you've been hearing me talk about the story that was due at the end of August. I was kind of panicky about because I wasn't like, oh, this deadline is I've got a month to write this. I need to get up there. Um, well, it turned out that story is not due to the end of September. So yay, I've got, I've got a rough draft. It's not great, but it's there, but I've got a little more time to work on it. So that was good. And then, uh, the end of last week, I got a little email saying, Hey, just a reminder, if you haven't turned in, uh, that ghost story that you agreed to write 11 months ago and then forgot to write down in the proper way so that you didn't realize that deadline was coming up and you completely haven't even thought of a plot for it, much less worked on a draft or anything like that. Yeah, that's due on the first. Make sure you get it in. And I kind of went, oh, yay. So um, so that's what I did this weekend. And um, I wrote uh, this fun little horror story in two days. And, um, I have, I, I posted this on my, on my page, uh, online, if you've seen it already, um, where, uh, you know, for all that we talk about, um, you know, I've talked before about there are, there's definitely a reason to practice cramming as many words into an hour as you can just working on output, you know, turn off the inner editor, just crank as much as you can out there. That's not the way you need to work all the time. Absolutely not. But there is an advantage to working on it periodically for both craft and development, which we're actually going to talk about, um, in October. I think that's on the calendar, uh, for that, but also very helpful for that situation. When you realize that you totally forgot that you had a hard deadline, um, with absolutely no extensions as per the editor's email. There we go. So I was like, Hey, Let's get this done. I'm actually pretty happy with that story. It's uh, it's uh, got the surrealists in it and postmodernism and a little bit of ghost action and yeah, it'll be fun. So so Natalie says that uh, yay, good words. I love that. Oh hey, this doesn't even suck feeling when reading my own work. Oh my gosh, that is, you know, because we're all used to the uh, to the you're reading your work and you're like, hmm. We had to have a first draft this is it. Hooray. Okay. But then there's those moments where you read it and you're like, Oh, wow, this isn't awful. You know? And then there's also moments when you're like, this is fantastic. Who wrote this? And, um, sometimes it appears on my computer and I have no memory of writing it, but it's in a file that only I have. So it probably was me logically, but I'm holding out possibly the theory of the little, like the cobblers have the little elves that make the shoes. Possibly writers have little elves that come and put good scenes in their work. I don't know. So, okay. That's enough of that. Let's, um, oh, I do want to do a brief reminder, uh, recap, I guess, from last week. Um, last week we talked about, uh, getting started with marketing and, um, just defining branding and starting to put together the pieces of an author platform or let's be more general, a creator platform. Um, and so you're, you know, again, it's not a kit. You're not going to get it all done in the first day, but, uh, you can, you know, we're starting to get those pieces in. And one of the, one of the things I asked you to do at the very end of that was to create a spreadsheet. We're going to track what we're calling author snapshots. I did not come up with that term, but I don't know who to credit. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's just the first of every month we're going to say, okay, this is this is what our data is. And uh, then we can use that data to make good decisions. Um, and I was supposed to do that today, but my day did not go as planned. I was supposed to do a lot of things today that did not get done before this video. So I will be doing those uh, later tonight. Um, yay, midnight. Um, so uh, but I wanted to just ask, did anybody out there in chat land do this? And um, so one of the things that I actually still have mine open because I did just a little bit of it while we were trying to get organized here. Um, so I noticed I wanted to share my uh, email subscriber list and excuse me. Um, my my list is uh, several thousands of people, but I just wanted to say over the last few months, 
the, the, um, it's been fluctuating by up to about a hundred people. So I just want to say in, like in April, it ended in six, five, five, and then May six, four, three, uh, six, three, seven, six, six, nine, six, five, zero, five, eight, seven. So it's been going up and down over the course of the year. And I'm not been, I've not been doing, uh, a lot differently in marketing you know, <laughs> over the last six months. Um, but I just noticed that when I was entering to that, that it's fluctuating by about hundred people. And I just wanted to tell you again, that's totally normal. If we remember, uh, last, last week when I said, I'm not worried about a change from one snapshot to the next. I'm worried about trends. That's what I'm more concerned about. So again, don't stress out. You get on the scale in the morning, you're up a pound. Who freaking cares? Okay. It's 24 hours. You, you can't tell anything, right? Um, don't forget about a pound anyway. Just, just don't, don't do that to yourself. Um, but my point is like, we're interested in trends. So, okay. Grace is waiting for a new cover so she can start data on a good baseline. Awesome. So and there's no, there's nearly no data right now. Yeah. And this is what I'm saying. Like just start collecting the data. You don't, you can process it later. Um, you know, Grace says that sounds better than I forgot. Trust me. I'm so with you. Okay. Um, I did, I was supposed to do work on my, um, ads, uh, this week. And so Monday I opened up my ad spreadsheet and I was like, I am just going to log some data look, I'm done. There we go. <laughs> I'm not going to process it. I'm not going to make any decisions. There we go. Also, I accidentally let all my ads expire. So I don't even have new data to enter on some of them. So that's on me. So I got to do some cleanup there and we'll get restarted. Um, <laughs> so Natalie uh, says she is still uh, under a rock, but did write it down as a thing to do later, which is uh, fantastic. Yeah. You know, and here's the thing. I just want to reiterate, like I tell myself this all the time. So I'm just going to reiterate for you guys. The data does not judge you. It is just a number. Nobody like really don't, don't give it more power than it has. You know, it's just a number. So if I look at, um, my newsletter subscribers and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like this, uh, you know, this, this, this is, this is less than, my friend has, you know, I have fewer subscribers than my friend has who cares. Okay. Like again, first of all, number of subscribers is a vanity metric. We talked about that, right? Um, it's the engagement rate is far more important than the number of subscribers. Um, so if you have 30% of the people opening your letters and that person with more subscribers only has 5% of the people opening your newsletters, that's a significant difference. And that's much more important. So yeah, anyway, collect the data. You can make decisions about it later. So there's your homework. I'll be doing my homework late tonight. <laughs> so, all right, let's get back to, so tonight we are going to try something new. And uh, just to give you the full, full view of where we're going, um, tonight it's trying something new in marketing and next week it's trying something new in craft. So you're gonna see try something new both weeks, but we're still on different topics because we are on our weekly uh, topic change. So. Oh, rejoin Twitch. There, my spreadsheet is off to a good start. Yay. Thank you, Kate. And thank you for joining us. Um, awesome. So yeah. And then, like I said, you're always going to adjust your, uh, spreadsheet as you go. So this, this month I had to add a column for Twitch subscribers because it's the first time I've had Twitch subscribers. So thank you guys. All right. Um, so when we're going to try something new. So I'm going to talk about things that I am attempting, things I have attempted, things I probably should attempt someday. Um, but here's the thing. Now that you've got that fantastic spreadsheet, use it because you want to log your before and after so you can make an educated decision on whether what you tried was useful. Um, you want to be able to find out what your return on investment was. And I'm going to say there's two ways to evaluate this. One, is it making you money? And that is at where I'm going with that is, um, we're going to skip the vanity metrics and go straight to, is it productive? So, um, I'm not necessarily going to worry about, I need more Pinterest followers than, you know, whatever the set number is, the arbitrary number I'm going to make up. Um, because we know that social media is not a really going to turn into sales. Social media is great for other, it's great for other things, other aspects of marketing, but it's not really great for sales. So I, I'm going to look at what is the actual worth the actual monetary value of this time and effort that I'm putting out in this new thing. The other thing is 
do I enjoy it? <laughs> because if you hate it, you're not going to keep it up. So don't do it um, because you won't do it well. So it's not going to worth your work your time. And um, sometimes you can do things because they're fun. I know, right? But even in business, sometimes you can do things because they're fun. You just have to make sure that you don't only do the fun things and not do any of the productive things. At that point, it is not business. It is a hobby. And if there's nothing wrong with having a hobby, so let me just get that out there. But if you're, if you if you're working at it, calling it a business, trying to make it a business, then it needs to be handled as a business and not as a hobby. If you're approaching it as a hobby, more power to you. Okay. But if you want it to be business, if you want it to be a career, then you got to do at least a little business work. I'm really sorry. Uh, but that doesn't mean you don't get to also have fun. So, um, for example, I'm just going to, uh, uh I mentioned last week um, that I technically have a Tumblr presence, but I don't consider it a really part of my marketing because it's I don't put any time and effort into it. I don't develop it. I don't maintain it. It's it's not really part of my marketing. But I occasionally have fun scrolling through Tumblr. <laughs> okay, so so that's allowed. So all right, um, and then as you're assessing this return on investment. Um, some of this stuff is going to be a long tail. Some of the stuff is going to take a while for you to see results. And, um, what I, I know from my day job, uh, you know, where we're, we're, we're working on behavioral changes and we're using data and all of this wonderful stuff. Um, there's, there's two aspects, two reasons why you might need to be tracking data. Um, one is if it takes a while to see results, your memory is fallible and, you know, if you're like, oh, well, I think I have more Twitter followers than I had three months ago, but why would I remember the number of Twitter followers I've had three months ago? I, I and like, first of all, it's 2020, three months ago was seven years ago. And secondly, you know, I've got other things hopefully going on in my life than staring at my Twitter follower account all day, right? So your memory is not going to be, not going to be super reliable. And the other part is your memories are incredibly subject to emotion. And as I mentioned, it's 2020 and uh, emotion is not your most, your best uh, decision-making metric <laughs> right now. Um, so I absolutely, I'm gonna, I'll tell the story from my, um, from my behavior uh, life. I had a client, we were working with a service dog um, and, you know, she was trying to get the dog to, uh, to move through doorways in a certain way uh, with her that, that assisted her. And so I, I gave them some homework to work on, um, with, with the doors and she called me. She's like, there's no way I can do this. This is insane. It's taking us three minutes to get through every door. I can't live my life to get, you know, take three minutes, to get through a door, you know, all this. I'm like, okay. 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 Let's let me come out. Let's see what's going on. And, um, so I came out and I timed her, uh, it's like, show me, go through this door five times. Show me how long it's taking. Show me what, show me what's going on. And I timed her and it was seconds, literal, like just a few seconds to get through the door. And, um, when I had actually timed her, she, you know, I had numbers like this was, this was, it wasn't three minutes. This was eight seconds or you know, whatever it was. And, um, you know, she stopped and she's like, oh, okay, I see that. And she's like, you know, I've been really stressed. I've been really upset. And I'm like, yeah. So everything felt bigger and more difficult. And it felt like you were making pro less progress than you actually were. Emotions absolutely, absolutely filter and influence our memories. So don't do that to yourself. Give yourself uh, hard data to work from. So, all right, sorry, bunny trail. We okay. Um, so you're, you're tracking your data, you're writing things down. Um, you're going to see whether or not it, it actually does anything for you, whether it's just fun. And then you get to make a decision on if it's not doing anything for me, if it's just fun, do I want to spend time on it? And, um, if it is doing something for me and is fun, that's the ideal. That's the sweet spot. So, okay. So, and so I would say set, when you're trying something new, set a goal. So I want to get more newsletter subscribers. I want to uh, get uh, 50 clicks on this buy link or, you know, whatever the, whatever your goal might be, but be prepared to get a different achievement than the one you planned for. So maybe uh, you didn't get a lot of clicks through on your buy link, but you did pick up subscribers on your newsletter. I don't know, whatever the case may be. So just be prepared to experiment and you won't notice those other changes if you're not tracking. So track. All right. So things that you can experiment with right now, uh, in 2020, I am playing with Amazon ads, which 
I had briefly ventured into before, didn't know what I was doing, absolutely like, worthless to me because I didn't go in with a lot of knowledge. Um, so it's, it's not, I think I lost like $20. Um, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't not eat that month or anything, but also that's $20. I'm not getting back, right? I don't want to just set fire to money and throw it away. So this year in 2020, I was like, okay, I should probably actually figure out what I'm doing with Amazon ads. So I signed up for a course and, um, oh my gosh, did homework. I don't like homework. I'm such a, I'm such a, I'm still the eight year old child inside. Like I don't want to do my homework, but doing homework is the only way you're, you're going to get, get anywhere. Um, and so I, st and I've started seeing, uh, I've got, I've got, it, I'm not deep enough in to know the long-term benefits of this, but I'm not actively losing money. So that's a good sign. <laughs> and so we'll see. I'm not yet one of those people who is, uh, making five, five figures a month just off my Amazon ads or, or whatever that, that'd be great. Not there yet. Um, but I started with something small that I could scale up. Uh, I actually, I'll, I mean, I'll, not no reason to be coy about this. I signed up for, uh, Brian Cohen's five day Amazon ad challenge, which was, which is a free thing. He runs, um, three times a year. I'm not sure exactly. Um, and maybe four, I don't know, three or four times a year. And it's free. It's five days. It's actually really useful information for, uh, in five days. And, uh, then you can experiment with that. And, you know, if you want to, if you want to take that information and then go deeper, there's other courses you can sign up for that are, that are paid. Um, or you, you know, I'd say just take the five day course and, and get what you want. But I will say, uh, that's one of those know, know where you are in the process, because if you have, uh, one fairly niche book, it may not be the best use of your time and money because uh, you're really going to get a lot more out of uh, a, a good ads program. What am I trying to say? Uh, an ads approach. There's a, an entire, there's a noun, there's a noun right there. The point is <laughs> you will get more bang for your buck. If you have a larger catalog or a series to work from, it will be easier to, uh, to invest and get a larger return, uh, because you're focusing, you can use a few ads to sell a lot of books, you know, kind of thing, as opposed to using a few ads to sell one book, um, or a lot of ads to sell one book. So, you know, again, I'm not telling you that you need to do this. I'm just telling you things I'm experimenting with because, you know, several years ago I tried ads and I failed miserably. So don't, uh, uh, don't, don't do something. Cause I, cause I said, this is what I'm doing. Do something, you know, look at, look at your own situation. Uh, but anyway, that's the thing that I'm working on and I will give you, uh, more feedback as we go, because like I said, I stupidly let all of my ads expire on July 31st because I was distracted by something shiny. And so then I'll be on that. So other things you can try that are new, um, is experiment with a new feature. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, strategy. <laughs> Natalie's helping me out in the chat and I was too busy wrapped up in my head. Strategy is a good word. It's not the one I was going for, but it will absolutely fit that niche. So yes, you're going to get the most, um, most, most benefit from a strategy that in court, that is benefit that is targeted toward multiple books or a series or something like that. All right. So other things that I am experimenting with, uh, or have experimented with, if you've got a newsletter, try a new newsletter feature. So, uh, this, this can work in different ways. I'm just going to list some things that come off the top of my head cause I didn't make notes. So hey, here we go. Um, but one that, uh, I did mention last week is, um, recommending other books. So if you are, uh, trying to establish yourself in the horror genre, totally just making this up, um, recommending other good horror, ghost story, paranormal, some, you know, just things in that vein so that people get used to finding good stuff that they enjoy in your newsletter. So a recommendation feature, uh, something that I experimented with briefly in mine was a, um, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I called it. Um, reader spotlight something, I don't know, but I would pull out a piece of fan art or something like that, that I could then include in my newsletter 
with permission and with links and, and all of that. I would not just taking people's stuff without, uh, without attribution. Um, but, and then I would, you know, share that in my newsletter and, uh, I got a little bit of feedback from that, but not, not, I didn't, I did not personally, other mileage may vary. I didn't personally get enough, um, enthusiasm generated by that to make it worth tracking things down, multiple emails to get permission and links and all of that. So, um, so for me, it was not the best use of my time. Still enjoy it. Please show me your fan art. Love that. <laughs> okay. But, um, but that particular feature in my newsletter, um, that wasn't what my readers were there for. Okay, great. You know, I'm still happy. Some, some of them were, and I'm happy always to direct people to cool stuff that I find, but enough to make it, you know, that was not what made people open the newsletter. So there we go. Um, so anyway, just, yeah, you know, think, find things. Um, I've got, you know, uh, so another person I know always has, uh, you know, this is where my cat is sleeping this month. You know, I think so. I mean, just f experiment, you know, if you've got a, a readership that's really into cats in general or your cat, that can be a good, good thing to do. So, all right. Um, something else to experiment with. And again, all of this is just experimentation, trying a new social media. Now we are in the middle of a dramatic period, uh, socially. And so <laughs> social media is not good for you right now. You know, be careful where you're putting yourself out. Um, so, you know, don't, don't be, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm trying to take a, a social media break, but Laura said I need to do this. So I'm going to go to the most dramatic platform and start something there. No, that's not what we're doing. Okay. But, uh, you know, it might be a good place to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to see what Instagram does for me because I haven't been on that yet. Um, and then just, just try something, get your toes wet. Great thing about social media is there's very little monetary outlay for that. You can, you know, it costs time. Everything costs time. Uh, but you can be selective about how much time you put in. I do strongly recommend being selective about how much time you put into social media, uh, for a variety of reasons, everything from productivity to personal health. Uh, but, um, you know, pick, pick something and go in and, uh, and just, just experiment and find out if you have a, uh, base there that you could connect with. You know, I talked last time about, you know, you're looking for people who also want to watch cat videos or, you know, whatever it is that you have to offer. So just go onto a new, uh, new platform and put out some material that's pretty representative of your brand and see if you get any nibbles. This is where it is very important. I'm going to reference last week again. Uh, none of this is selling. This is not selling. There is no part of this that is selling. You're just putting out cool stuff that relates to you and you know, your product, but I'm not asking anybody to buy from me at this point. I'm just throwing out, you know, Hey, here's this amazing photo of three seals leaping from Loch Ness at the same moment that forms the little Loch Ness monster. Isn't that cool? I like cryptids. How about you? Like just, you know, whatever. And then you people come right back and they're like, Oh my gosh, I do love cryptids. Let me follow this. Oh, there's more cryptid stuff. Oh, there's more cryptid stuff. Oh, you've got a cryptid story. Cool. Okay. So that's the kind of, uh, uh, kind of thing you did. And yes, I did post a photo like that. I don't know, four years ago, something when I had a cryptid story coming out. So, uh, you can, uh, you can find, find things that relate to what you are going to be promoting later. But right now, when you're first experimenting in a new platform, it's all just branding. It's just marketing, just sharing cat videos. It's not selling. Okay. And again, just a reminder, social media does not sell books. Social media is great for establishing and maintaining a brand. Social media is great for staying in contact with readers you already have. Social media is not good for retail. So just keep that in mind. Uh, big numbers on social media do not translate to big sales. It's just a vanity metric. Don't, don't sweat that that hard. The other thing that you can do is enhance what you're already doing. So you're going to try something new with what you already have. And, uh, sometimes you're just stopping back, looking at, you know, what you're doing and like, okay, let's do a little maintenance. I'm going to clean out the deadwood on my newsletter list so that I'm getting rid of all the subscribers who have not opened an email from me in 16 months. Um, 
Because if you are using a commercial mail service, those people are costing you money. If you, regardless of the kind of service you're using, by the way, when I'm talking about commercial service or, or a self-hosted service, at no point is this you sending your own emails off your own email account. That is, don't do that. We, don't, <laughs> we can go into that another time, but the short answer is no. Okay. Um, so, but if you are using a service like uh, Aweber or MailerLite or something, or if you're using a self-hosted service like Sendy, uh, which is what I do, um, either way, having the, that, uh, those, those subscribers on your list who do not open, they actually inhibit the deliverability of your mail to the people who do want what you have. Um, uh, so getting rid of that deadwood, it hurts your subscriber list size, but remember that's a vanity metric. So at one point I had uh, I want to say about 5,500 people on my newsletter list, but I had a open rate of just under 20%. And I didn't check any of these numbers before this. So I'm going off memory. This has been a few years ago. Um, and you know, just under 20%. I mean, it's, it's better than industry average, but it's really not great. <laughs> okay. So I went through and, uh, uh, ran some filters and found the people who had not opened something for me in over a year. And I sent an email just to them. It was actually a series of a couple of emails just saying, Hey, I see you haven't opened anything from me. Um, you know, I understand like life gets complicated and, and whatnot, but if you would like to stay, click this button and you'll stay on the list. And if you are not interested or here's an unsubscribe link. Okay. Or if you're not interested, um, then in two or three months or whatever, uh, you, you will be removed from this list automatically. And I sent just a couple of those and I got some people who clicked to stay and I got a couple of unsubscribes and then I got people who just timed out. And, um, so then I cleaned that out and I want to, I want to say I cleaned out like 2000 people. That's a lot guys. Like I watched my list just cut in half, which, oh, it hurts. But my engagement rate went way up and because one, more people, the people who stayed were the people who were interested. And two, more people who stayed were getting my emails now because all the servers were recognizing that a higher percentage of those emails were being opened. Therefore, they're more likely to be real email and not spam and everything, all my deliverability went up. So uh, just doing maintenance on your email list or on your social media or the things that you're doing is good. The other thing that I did uh, just recently, and I, you know, I mentioned I've had a YouTube channel for a while, but I'm starting to, I'm putting these videos up there now. And um, I realized that my YouTube video descriptions were incredibly basic, you know, like this is Laura talking about marketing or, you know, whatever, um, not, not really useful. So uh, I made my YouTube descriptions a little more, a little beefier, and I added links to each of them. Those links ran to my, uh, my website and my newsletter subscription form and, uh, to Twitch. Like if you like this video, here's where it's actually happening, you know, everything. And so I went through my YouTube, uh, dis video descriptions and just pasted that series of links in. Um, and I did that all at once cause it's just copy paste. It's relatively quick within an hour. I had new subscribers here on Twitch <laughs> just be by adding, uh, the video by the adding the links on uh, the YouTube video, uh, it led people back to this. And, you know, I don't, maybe, maybe you guys would have found your way here. Uh, but, um, but I made it easier for people to find their way here by adding a link. So, you know, make it easy. Always rule number one, never make it hard for your customer to be your customer. Okay. That's just basic business. Um, so, you know, just going through and say, doing something so simple of taking care of something that I was already doing, it was no extra effort, right? To, to paste those links in. So I'll be doing that moving forward. Um, and yes, I do know that was the source because I'm using trackable, uh, links. Um, so I do know exactly how that worked. And so I'm using switchy, uh, bit.ly is another really popular option. Uh, I do prefer, I used to use bit.ly. I do prefer switchy now. However, switchy is not cheap. Like I think it's actually pretty expensive and I couldn't normally afford it, but I got an AppSumo deal. So God bless AppSumo. Um, but whatever you're using for tracking your links, which I strongly recommend that you do because you can, it's another way to tell what is useful 
to you and what is not. So you can see where people are finding you, know where to spend your time and effort. Um, but make sure that your, that your links you're, you're using to, uh, to, to be found, to share with things, uh, make sure they are trackable, which lots and lots and lots of those, all of your freebie services will do that. Um, but then also make sure they are updatable. And that's why I switched away from the free, free bit.ly service when I got the chance to get switchy, uh, if one, if you create a short link and then share it and then something changes so that that link that that short link goes to is no longer valid, but that short link's already out in the world. So I'll give you the example that happened to me was I created a bunch of links for my newsletter that went to MailChimp years ago. And, uh, so those are all out in print books all across, you know, all across the country, all around the planet. And then I'm no longer using MailChimp for a variety of reasons. And I can't do anything. Those links are out there. I cannot update it with, cause I made them with the free service of Bitly, uh, which maybe it's changed. I don't know, whatever at the time, um, I could not, I could not update those links. So I still get people signing up for a newsletter and MailChimp that doesn't exist. So periodically I go into MailChimp and I harvest those addresses and I try to bring them over. That works because I still have an account that I can get into on MailChimp. It wouldn't work if I, uh, you know, in, in all situations that wouldn't be possible. So, um, how do you organize the link tracking? Is there a way to tag or categorize within the link service or is that another spreadsheet? There is a way to tag in the link service. It's great. So I actually have folders in Switchy. Like these are the links that I use on Twitter. These are the links that I use in my YouTube descriptions. You know, these are the links that I'm sending out an email or, or whatever. So I can see um, just at a glance, I'll open up the YouTube folder. There's a list of all of my links and I can see, oh, somebody, <laughs> this link's less than an hour old and somebody has already clicked through to Twitch and I have a new Twitch subscriber. Hooray. <laughs> okay. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, you could do it all on a spreadsheet, but most of your, uh, any, any link service that's going to be worth it's worth the use is going to have an, a tracking system for you. So just drop those into folders and things. So, um, are you guys familiar with AppSumo? AppSumo is the bomb. Okay. So AppSumo is a, uh, I don't want a clearinghouse. It's a, it's a catalog. It's a service that finds useful software or services and then, um, and then brokers deals to get people, uh, to, you know, basically I'm assuming it's a, it's a really fast capital builder for companies. So, um, so for example, uh, brain FM is something that I've mentioned before. Brain FM is the, uh, uh, music, the mood setting music, uh, not just music, but not just mood setting, but it's, I don't know, it does stuff in the brain. Um, it's not binaural beats, but it's another, uh, performance enhancing drug for your brain delivered via music. And, um, you know, there's a monthly subscription for it, but I got a lifetime deal on AppSumo for $25. I did like five, E6 years ago. And so, and I've, I'll have it forever. So it, there's, it's definitely, um, definitely useful. I actually, hold on. I'm going to shamelessly, shamelessly give you guys a link to this and hold on. Do, do, do. There you go. That is, it's okay. It's, there's a link in the chat. So full disclosure, that is an affiliate link to AppSumo. Also, but I don't, I'm, I, I heartily recommend them. I use them all the time. And the customer service is fantastic. They don't know I'm talking, by the way. They have no idea that I'm, that I'm this is not a paid, paid promotion. Um, but uh, within the last year, I had a service that I had purchased that I really liked. Um, and, you know, the, the, the service was great. And the company said, okay, here's what we have. You know, these are the new updates that we'll be rolling out next month. Look forward to them. And I loved it. And then, um, the company disappeared. Like the site that I logged into for the service, uh, was down, uh, the company's social media still existed, but they weren't putting out anything new. They weren't responding to anything. It was like everybody had just vanished. And so a few weeks went by and you know, customers are talking to each other on social media, like what happened? Uh, so I wrote to AppSumo and I'm like, Hey, I purchased this software subscription here. And, uh, you know, they're, 
they vanished. Do you know anything about it? And Absim was like, no, we don't. Here's all your money back. And um, so you know, there it was, you know, really, I, I, got, I, got no, I got zero complaints about them. They're really good. All right. Um, anyway, the short version, <laughs> I got way off the, uh, way off the, the track there. Um, whatever tracking link service you use, um, you make sure that it is, that you, you're getting your tracking, you're getting your tracking data out of it and then make sure it's updatable. So that's what I was after. Um, okay. Questions, you guys, things, things that are coming up, uh, as I, as I ramble, because I did an awful lot of talking without interruption there. I'm going to grab a drink while I check the chat. Okay. Uh, so I really never intended this to be like a weekly challenge, but last week I told you to build a spreadsheet. <laughs> this week, I'm going to tell you, think of something new to try. Um, I don't care if it's, I don't care if it works or not. I don't care if it, in fact, I'm going to say, pick something that might not work. You know, go ahead and give yourself permission to say, I'm going to, I'm going to try this. And when it doesn't work, I'm going to yeet it and try something else. Like, the, there's so much that you can benefit by experimenting. Go ahead and give yourself permission to experiment. And if that means you're going to try something with a low chance of success to start, so you won't feel bad when it, when it go, doesn't, doesn't turn out to be the best thing ever, do that if, if that's going to make you more comfortable. And if you're, don't need that, that, uh, then just go, go for the, go for the moon and, and good luck to you. So, Oh, Grace says, I bought a thing off AppSumo that you recommended a few months ago, but I only just remembered. Guess I didn't use it. Thanks, 2020. Yeah, that's, um, I, I will I will confess that I have on more than one occasion logged into AppSumo to remember what it is that I was pretty sure I had bought but couldn't remember what it was. So I just went through my order history until I found it. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I knew that was going to be useful. And then I go use that. That is totally a thing that I've done. But um Again, they're really, really good with their customer service. And if you have something that you purchased that you just haven't used, they'll refund it. Like they're just really good. So, and no, I'm not working for them, but that is, uh, it's just been my experience. I've been very, very happy with them. Okay. Uh, other things. Oh, so as I mentioned, <laughs> you know, I'm, Dan says, I'm glad I'm not the only one who does things like that. I, I know it's 2020. We're all doing things like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is September. So that is Twitch's subscription drive. Uh, so again, you know, if you guys are, you've got, I'm going to be here anyway. So you guys are welcome to be here. If you're sitting here with an Amazon prime account that you're not uh, using for a Twitch subscription, I would love if you would use your free included Twitch subscription for me. Thank you. I would really appreciate that. Uh, if you, um, uh, don't, but if you want to use a, if you ever, if you're ever considering subscribing, not with your included Amazon prime subscription, September is the month to do it because it's up to a third off. And then that's great. Um, otherwise, you know, you're welcome to stay here and watch the ads. I made 12 cents off ad views last month. You guys going to get rich off this 12 cents. So, but if you have an Amazon prime account and you would like to not have to watch the ads, uh, please use your subscription. It benefits you. It benefits me. Everybody wins except the advertisers, I guess. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, and I do have a Ko-Fi it's Laura V A B L A U R A Victor alpha Bravo. Uh, that, but again, I'm going to be here regardless. So thank you guys. And, um, then I'm going to wrap this because when we are done tonight, I get to go out and hide in a field. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I, I host is, uh, uh, no, not, not in this venue, but I, I have, uh, acreage and there's search teams that come a couple of search teams who come and train their dogs on my property. And so I'm going to go out and hide in the woods and pretend to be lost until a dog finds me. Um, oh, hold on. There's a chat question and then I'll come right back to that. Um, Oh, great question uh, from Natalie. If you have multiple books in mid or late revisions, but nothing in print yet, what marketing infrastructure would you put in place early on versus stuff you can grow into? Current books are nonfiction, but novels are on the way too. Okay, so fantastic question. Good news, nonfiction is definitely the easiest way to start with this. 
Um, so nonfiction is all about bu building credibility in your field so that people know that they can get good, useful, reliable information from you. So I had a uh, nonfiction um, blog uh, that had uh, had pretty good visitation before I released my nonfiction book. And, um, and that was hugely helpful because I was not starting a platform from zero. So this is a great way you can start doing this with your nonfiction, um, getting your name out in discussion groups, getting, uh, yeah, blogging is not dead guys. Like a lot of people were like, when, when, when social media gets big, it's going to kill the blog and the blog is not dead actually. And, um, it's infinitely more searchable than social media. If you, if somebody puts in, oh my gosh, pick a, pick a topic. How do I fix, uh, my leaky toilet? <laughs> no, I'm just making stuff up. Um, but if somebody's going to search for that, that, that is going to lead to a blog post way before it leads to a tweet. All right. So don't, uh, again, social media is great for maintaining relationships you already have. It's not uh, it's not good for other things. It's not good for, for being discovered and it's not good for selling. So use it for what it's good for. Um, so blog posts are, are good, uh, being in communities, existing communities where you can build name recognition. So, uh, if there are, oh my gosh, I'm going to show my age. If there are listservs <laughs> or email lists that, um, that are dedicated to a topic or, um, again, that you can, this is where you can use social media. So, uh, if it's a Facebook group or something like that, that you can be a participant in this larger community, keep in mind, you're just building name recognition within that community. That's not going to be searchable to the, to the outside world, but it's a good way to build name recognition within that community as a start. And, uh, and that can lead to word of mouth. So that's another thing, uh, that, that you want. So, uh, again, nonfiction, you're just going to put useful information out there, uh, and people come to view you as a source for that useful information. And then when you have a book available, you say, Hey, you like all that stuff that I gave you before. Would you like a more complete version neatly packaged in one place? And hopefully they say yes. Uh, so that's, that's a good way to start that with nonfiction, uh, for novels, you're going to just start establishing that, uh, again, what we talked about with branding. So this is the mood, this is the tone, this is the material, you know, here are the best cryptid pictures. Here are the best cat videos. Here are really good, um, uh, sweet romances, you know, just, you know, things that again, you're becoming, you, you want people to have a certain association, um, a tone a mood, uh, you're a go-to when they are in the mood for, you can supply them with, and, uh, and then you, that's going to help establish that, uh, that brand for when you have something ready to go. So, um, uh, I hope, I hope I was in the right direction <laughs> on that and answering that. So, um, okay. Jumping back to the search team. Um, I have a couple of search groups who, who train, uh, at my place. And, uh, so one of the things that you'll see on the schedule, uh, when I posted, you know, we have a, a weekly topic, a weekly theme, uh, for this to write and have to, to write and have written, I guess you know, now that we have a title. Um, and one of the things is a learn with me, which is where either I explore, uh, something. Well, usually I guess it's always, it's, I'm, it's me exploring something that I find interesting, um, that I want to learn more about and, or something that is frequently gotten wrong in fiction or film or media of some sort. Um, so I don't know, it just occurred to me, like, would a search, uh, would search training be a good one to cover for that? Because it's something I know a decent amount about, but I'm certainly not an expert in it. Um, but it is also something that I frequently see, uh, misrepresented in media. I'm thinking in particular of a TV show where a couple of guys are hiding from uh, law enforcement pursuing them. And one of them has a sandwich and the guy's like, Oh, I can't believe you brought the sandwich, throw it away because the dogs will find us. If we have a sandwich, I'm like, those dogs will find you if you don't have a sandwich. So <laughs> anyway, that's a thing. Okay. Natalie says, yes. Okay, great. Yeah. If you guys, um, and please, please, please always feel free to let me know. Like this is a, this is a topic that I would like to see explored and like to see gotten right. You know, I've, I've put out, um, 
some requests to people to, to come and chat with me about, about how to poison people and, and it just in books, guys, just like, please use this information responsibly. Um, but, uh, later this month we'll have, uh, Kelly McCaff coming on talking about folklore and how that's relevant to our story. So all kinds of cool stuff, but okay. Yes. Yeah, so maybe I will talk to somebody about coming and talking about search. Um, search can be for either live people or for cadavers. Um, and there are similarities and differences between that. And there's a lot of information that, like I said, I frequently see misrepresented in media and it would be one of those things that, uh, you could be the person who gets it right. <laughs> so, okay. Um, but yeah, always feel free to give me uh, a heads up on what would be uh, interesting for you. Um, so if there are no other questions, I'm going to wrap it here, douse myself in bug spray and go hide in the woods. Um, <laughs> so I be, uh, this is how I spend my evenings. Yes. Just lying in a, lying in a hole, pretending not to be here. So, um, Oh my gosh. <laughs> she, said, uh, she says, my firstborn child, if you get an ethologist or biologist to explain why 100% of werewolf books are wrong, 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 they really are. And I have some blog posts on that. Um, so yeah, those are already out there. I, I actually, it was hilarious because I was invited to be on a romance panel at a writer's conference based purely on one of my blog posts about why the alpha male in that particular, you know, tropey, trope kind of romance, um, is a misrepresentation of how actual wolf hierarchy and, and animal pack hierarchy works. And I'm just like, it was like, how did I get on a romance panel? Because that's not what I write and it's not really my field, but, but, but I know about, I know about hierarchy and I know about pack dynamics. So, okay. That makes me the expert here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a good person to watch. Um, I'm not a good person to share werewolf romances with. I'm not a good person to watch Jurassic World with. I'm sorry. Just let me tell you up front. That's my thing. But I'm happy to tell you how to do it better. And I actually um, have done sessions at conferences on uh, your velociraptors are broken, how to write animal behavior more accurately. So there we go. Okay. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate uh, you coming here. And if you're catching this later on YouTube or on the podcast or whatever, I love you guys too. Thank you so much. And absolutely feel free to contact me. LauraVictorAlphaBravo.com is where you can find all my stuff, but also email me about anything that you particularly want covered uh, because I will happily take your questions and turn them into uh, our long rants. So <laughs> thank you guys. Take care. Have a lovely evening and be safe. Wash your hands. Bye.